All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lopagus Show. I'm One Bar with Lopagus. Uh, we're going to talk about some players who potentially, potentially could be on the hot seat after the draft and after some new players coming in, crowding up that depth chart. Absolutely, and your, your seat should be getting hot because you haven't eaten your manwich yet. Uh, I will, I will. I mean, I, I was, we are going to try to do it this weekend, and now it's Monday, so realistically, late week, weekend, Seem- I mean, I'd like to have a beer with it. Seems like a weekend kind of a deal. It does. It's coming, though. All right, yeah, let's talk about some players on the hot seat after the draft. You know, maybe things are getting a little warm on the old Tukas. Warm on the Tukas. Uh, yeah, let's start off with start off with the easy one, the quarterback situation. We bring in J.J. McCarthy. We have Sam Darnold, and we have Jaron Hall and Nick Mullins. We're not keeping four. We're no not. Wayne Hill. Yeah, and I don't know. I, I think this one's going to be Jaron Hall. I just don't see why you keep that guy after year one. Yeah, but would the KOC handle that situation great? Probably not. He probably never should have started. I know he had to against the Falcons, but later in the season against Green Bay, just stick with Nick Mullins at that point. Confidence shatter. But when you have a young quarterback like J.J. McCarthy, who is your future, every single coaching uh, availability you have should be put into him. Every single resource, every single asset should be put into the guy who's going to be your future. I wouldn't worry about spending any time with the guy in the second year who's probably at best going to be a career backup. <laughs> Yeah, you're moving on. And to be clear, we were both clamoring for Jaron Hall to start. We all were. Thing. So, but yeah. we we're not the head coach. We we sh- we don't we shouldn't know better. So here here's the biggest thing. So I think this could go either way. Easily, both these guys do don't like to move because one of them's out. Uh, Mullins is so Jaron Hall's 26. Mullins mm-hmm. is 29. That's crazy to me. Really, Nick Mullins seems like he's been in the league since about 1987. So there's only a three year difference between the three and and Mullins. You know we, how many games he started, but the big thing here is Mullins does save you a little bit of money if you cut him. It's like one point eight million dollars. Um, so they might look at it that way, but yeah, I mean I would say Jaron Hall's probably I mean, and, and the biggest reason Jaron Hall's probably out is because he'll go back on the practice squad. Yeah, Nick Mullins probably won't do that. No, I don't think so. I think Nick Mullins, someone would sign Nick Mullins, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, nah, I agree. It is close, around. though. If, if it went the other way, it wouldn't be overly shocking. But I, I think Jaron Hall is going to be the odd man out here. Yeah, I think I think when all is said and done, they'll all be on the team. Hall will just be on the practice squad. But uh, yes, his seat is hot. Let's go to another man seat who is hot. Man to seat. Trot. Let's go to Ja'Kalen Roy, our fifth rounder from last year. Yeah, Ja'Kalen Roy battled some injuries his rookie year. Never really did much of anything. I don't have a stat line in front of me here, but... Four uh, tackles. He had four, four tackles. tackles. I thought it was a little better than that. Uh, yeah, I mean, a guy with fifth-round pick last year. Vikings have not been uh, doing well, at uh, least under the Quasi regime, with their fifth-round picks. So, Stacey Atomoyo was the one before that. I was high in Roy. I still am. I still think he's got hope and still has potential. But, yeah, with the guys they brought in here, not only in, in the draft but in free agency, uh, they, they can only keep a few. And, and Roy really has to step up to uh, keep his spot on this team. Yeah, that's what it comes down to, numbers. And, and to be clear, it's not like we're saying we want these guys gone. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just more of who we think could possibly be gone. And, yeah, he played 95 snaps last year, four tackles, graded out at 58.3. And the biggest thing is, is like, you know, I don't know. I think we had higher hopes for him. He was projected to be like a fourth, fifth-round guy. We get him in round five, uh, coming to a defensive line that was just gross. And he still really couldn't get out there. I know he had some injuries, but I think Levi Drake Rodriguez is going to be a sneaky dude. It's going to be like, I think they love this dude. I think they love him a lot. And Ja'Kalen Roy, uh, Ja'Kalen Roy, they don't love enough to put on the field. And I said it before, but they they moved on from Atomueo, a fifth rounder after one year. And Ja'Kalen Roy, again, practice squad. He has to step it up. He absolutely has to step it up. He has to show something in camp, practice. Uh, preseason games, whatever it may be, he has to earn a spot in this roster because it's not going to be handed to him this year. Uh, yes, and Taki Tayami, too. Can't forget about him. He's mm-hmm. in the mix as well. Let's go to cornerback. Let's go to an easier one where it's a Caleb Evans where I know a lot of Vikings fans are, are kind of hoping that he's the odd man out. Yeah, I mean, him. It could also be Andrew Booth Jr., but Evans, to me, is the one that's a little bit more worrisome, just how bad his play fell off last year. Uh, the first time he was benched, Brian Flores just said, hey, you know what? We all have bad weeks. And then he came back and he did it again. He might have been worse. So I don't know what's going on with Evans, if it's a mental issue, if he just doesn't understand, you know, there's assignments, if, you know, what confidence maybe is shattered. But he fell off the map now. And you got, you got obviously, Kyrie Jackson added. You got Shaq Griffin in free agency and Dwight McLaughlin, the undrafted free agent rookie, in the mix. So, uh, yeah, things got a little bit hotter here for Caleb Evans. 
Yeah, I mean, what's the big thing they loved about a Caleb Evans? What can't you teach? It's his size. And what do we draft? A big old huge cornerback in Kyrie mm -hmm. Jackson who has that size and a lot more upside. Caleb Evans had a 29.3 grade in tackling. Oof. Almost one of the almost dead last when it comes to in all the corners in the league. And and you can you can like PFF or not, but it, it backed it up on the field. That dude couldn't tackle anything. Uh, he does show glimpses. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm torn on this one, but but Kyrie Jackson and Dwight McLaughlin, uh, Dwight McLaughlin again could be a sneaky one that makes the 53. Yeah, and let's not forget they're putting Jay Will out there in front of him uh, last year late in the season. So Evans is a guy who really just again just went off a cliff he last couple. Gave games. up. He gave up. And coaches like that's one thing to have a bad stretch, but he just threw in the towel and it was apparent. Well, I, I, twice. I, something something's going on there. There's something going on. So Caleb Evans, let's go to uh, let's go to Brian Asamoa, linebacker, and we didn't draft anybody, but we brought in some undrafted free agents in Dallas Gant, uh, Donovan Manuel, and C.J. Cloyd. That's a lot of bodies to bring in at one position. Yeah, Gant seems to be the one getting all the steam, getting some buzz, but Asamoa, I mean, we just haven't seen it from him yet. He had that one flashy play, I maybe mean, it was like a series. He forced a fumble, recovered it, and he ran back a little bit been nothing since like i know ivan pace jr you know surpassed him last year on the depth chart the third round pick quasi's first year i think his free time the honeymoon's over with him he doesn't show anything he's gonna be gone i thought i think the honeymoon was over last year 36 snaps and i know he got injured in camp i mean he missed a ton yeah, of time didn't help i mean no. it didn't help and you know maybe he comes back and he's just a, a brand new man like brooks and dunn once said uh but uh, who was the other guy hill grugier the linebacker yeah. Uh, so he's again, this numbers we were running Blake Cashman numbers, but man, he's 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 not, not looking, looking good. good, it's looking bad. All right, we got one more, and this one hurts our hearts a little bit to even put him on here, but we got to do it justice. And that's uh, that's the special teams demon, Najee Thompson. Najee Thompson, could his seat be hot? I mean, a lot of guys Vikings brought in do have special team ability, especially those undrafted free agents. Uh, look at our boy Devron from last week. We talked to. He's a special teams ace. Uh, maybe you know receivers easier to make the roster on than it is cornerback, and so maybe they keep someone like him who can bring that special teams ability. Uh, but yeah, to even think Najee's seat is hot. But you know what? Najee's seat was hot last year, and he still made this damn team. Yeah, I think he still. I I think he makes the team. Uh, it, it's. You know, I know he, he's the hopeful. The hope is to get him in at cornerback and maybe maybe build him up there. But uh, like he's he's such a special teams demon. I mean, you, you hate to see one roster spot go just to that. But when you say just to that and you watch him play, he's there every damn time. It's like that would be real tough, real tough to give up on. It comes down to the cornerbacks. What are they going to do at corner? What are they going to keep? How many are they going to keep? How many receivers are going to keep? Well. Yeah, and he can continue to develop at corner. Like, I mean, that's still an area of his game that continue to be coached up and learned. So, I mean, he can still get on the field as a corner, and you know, he could show a lot of improvement in year two in that position. So, there's definitely a lot of hope for him. But yeah, again, Najee, you know, he defied the odds once. I think he'll do it again. Hell yes, he will back it up with those beautiful yellow shoes blazing down there, God. smoking somebody, making them shit themselves right on the field. Hell yeah. Those are uh, those are five we got on the hot seat. Let us know if there's any other guys that you think should be on the hot seat. And remember this, the final installment of the Police Academy movie franchise was in 1994 with Mission to Moscow. Horrible.